Hi everyone, this is Syrian Girl. Over the last five years, we have fought to prevent a US invasion of Syria. But in the last few months, the Obama administration has sent US special forces into North Syria. The administration did this silently, like thieves in the night, without consulting the US public, even though the public widely opposed an intervention in 2013. And even though Obama repeatedly said for years that there would be no boots on the ground in Syria. There would be no American boots on the ground. This move is even more illegal than the invasion of Iraq, since there is no UN Security Council approval and Syria isn't under a Chapter 7 resolution. The pretext for the invasion is fighting ISIS in Raqqa, and I'm sure that is what the US Special Forces believe they are doing. But the real objective is to enforce Kerry's Plan B, balkanizing Syria. The troops are there to make sure that the Kurdish separatist forces, the YPG, get to Raqqa before the Syrian army does. It is also convenient that Raqqa has much of Syria's oil. The Plan B is just a copy of the Yinon Plan, drawn up by Israel in 1982, which calls for the use of Kurds as a means by which to divide and conquer the region. But just who exactly are the Kurdish YPG? The media claims they are the most moral force in Syria. But as usual, the media lies. What the media isn't telling you is the YPG are directly affiliated with the PKK, which the US has designated a terrorist organization. This is probably why the US Special Forces were told to remove the YPG insignia from their uniforms. The State Department knew it could become an embarrassment in future. So as usual, what the US government sees as terrorists yesterday our allies today, and perhaps terrorists again tomorrow. Incidentally, the State Department recently asked Russia not to bomb Al-Qaeda in Syria. The media is also not telling you that, like ISIS, the Kurdish YPG are attacking Christians in North Syria. They have shot and killed a Syrian Christian militiamen, assassinated Assyrian leaders, and bombed Assyrian restaurants. And just like ISIS, the Kurdish YPG used child soldiers. The media prefers to show you only their use of female fighters. Some of these kids have died in combat, and this March, two primary school girls were kidnapped by YPG and forced to enlist. When their parents protested, they were beaten up. And, just like ISIS, the Kurdish YPG's ultimate goal is to steal Syrian land and make a state of their own. First going through the pseudo-federalism route. The leader of Kurdish YPG, Saleh Muslim, stated that he planned to use Raqqa as a hostage in order to blackmail an unwilling Syrian population into accepting federalism. Some of you might say, but Kurds deserve their own state, or Kurds deserve autonomy, but I'm afraid you've been under a lot of propaganda on Kurdish history, especially in Syria. The word Kurd simply means Iranian nomad, in the same way that Bedouin means Gulf Arab nomad. Nomadic peoples, like Bedouins, Gypsies and Kurds, don't have states because by definition nomads move around. Ali Tahir Ibrahim and his family are Kurdish nomads from the Norway tribe. <laughs> Kurds are ethnically Iranian, they speak an Iranian dialect and wandered out of a region of northwest Iran called Kurdistan. You can see from this map how the Kurdish tribes flowed out of northwest Iran into Iraq, Turkey and minimally into Syria. This is why Kurdish people are divided between four nations. They wandered into them, not because a historic place called Kurdistan was divided by Sykes-Picot. There has never been a Kurdistan or Kurdish civilization in history, no artifact of it. The areas of Turkey that the PKK Kurds claim is their ancestral home used to be Armenia before the Armenian Genocide. And Syria is the birthplace of civilization. This is why Iraqi Kurdistan is trying to claim the 5,000 year old history of the Assyrian Empire as Kurdish history. Otherwise, they vandalize it and deny its existence. This will make a lot of people angry, and they will try to deny it and call me a liar. But you can't deny history, and why should there be any shame in being a nomad? 
Both Kurds and Arab Bedouins settled in Syria recently in comparison to Syria's history. The indigenous people of Syria are a non-Arab Levantine ethnicity who adopted the Arabic language after the Arab conquest. These are the people that built Damascus and Aleppo, the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. While some Kurds are loyal Syrian citizens who serve in the Syrian army, the majority of Kurds living in North Syria arrived after 1920 as refugees from Turkey and continued to arrive in waves after each failed rebellion against the Turkish government. Effectively, refugees who were allowed into the country are now trying to take a piece of it. If you recall, that's how Israel was created. No wonder Israel is in full support of creating a Kurdistan. It must also help that the borders of the proposed Kurdish state of Rojava perfectly line up with Greater Israel. It is ironic that the people who claim to support Palestine are now supporting the creation of a Kurdistan, effectively another Israel, out of Syria. In spite of the influx of Kurdish refugees into Syria over many decades, Kurds are still not a majority in the areas that they are trying to claim autonomy. They are a plurality making up only 40% of al hasake and only 9% of Syria as a whole. This statistic is changing, however, since the war has caused 100,000 Kurds to flee their homes and become refugees. There are now 1.2 million Kurds living in Germany, almost as many as in Syria. I wonder if the liberals would support a Kurdish autonomous state in Germany. And can those liberals explain how is it moral to support giving 1.6 million people the oil wealth of Syria that is meant to be sustaining 23 million of its population? Because the YPG don't have a demographic majority required to impose an ethnocentric state, the YPG have been conducting an ethnic cleansing campaign trying to wipe out rival ethnic groups, Benoan Arab villages have been burned to the ground, and the Syrian Christian homes have been confiscated by the YPG. Some YPG supporter will probably now claim they have Arabs and Assyrians fighting in their ranks. But these people aren't representative, just like Kurds who fight for ISIS aren't representative of Kurds as a whole. If you want to know what happens if you support a Kurdistan, just have a look at Iraqi Kurdistan, where Assyrian Christians are being pushed off their land. This is what US troops have been misled into helping create, just as they were misled in Iraq. This is why it is imperative that the Syrian army win the race to Raqqa and crush the ISIS terrorists once and for all. But so long as they can reach Tabaka Air Base near Raqqa first, the army can reinstate Syria's air supremacy over Raqqa and their Azur. The good news is, the army has already begun the offensive to retake Raqqa and are inching closer to Tabaka Air Base. But there are some rumors going around on social media that say Russia won't provide air support due to having her own agenda involving the Kurds and Turkey. There are also rumors that Russia and the US have already agreed on how to divide Syria between them. But so far it seems Russia is backing Syria's offensive on Raqqa. The situation is reminiscent of the end of World War II, where the US and Russia were in the same theater of Germany, fighting the same forces, but were still not really on each other's side. It makes one wonder what would happen if both sides met in Raqqa. Germany ended up being divided after World War II, but Syria's situation is very different, and there are many forces at play determined to keep the country together. The Syrian army is not going to give up on any inch of Syria. They are going for total victory, no matter what. This is Syrian Girl. Please subscribe if you want to hear more.